Welcome to Dynamic Foundry Group. Today we are going to see a small video on calculating variable cost. What is variable cost? Variable cost is a cost which is directly related to product. When we produce particular part or casting, actual data resources used for producing that part will represent the variable cost. Hence it is directly related to part and it changes changes from part to part or casting to casting based on its input resources. So calculating variable cost is very important and needs to be done with enough care by considering all required resources. Variable cost contains metal cost, power cost, mold cost, core cost, fettling and short lasting cost, labor cost, painting cost, rejection cost and transport freight cost. We will understand the estimation of variable cost by taking one of the example of DFG hub casting here. Here most important thing is to understand the customer specific requirements from the customer. Many times we do not understand the exact requirements from our customer at the time of development and then we give our commercial offer. After development or while development when customer asks these additional requirements we find these points or requirements are not considered in the commercial offer and so we fail in achieving target cost at the end of the day. So it is very important to understand the customer specific requirement from the customer while initial development stage. Especially we need to understand from our customer material grade, hardness, microstructure requirements, radiography level, heat treatment if any, surface finish and aesthetic loop requirements, if any specific requirement related to machining, painting requirements like DFT, salt spray test etc, delivery and payment terms, inventory requirements. Also, requirement regarding any leakage testing has to be considered with radiography level so that we can able to consider the quality requirement of the casting which we can reflect in our costing and give our best commercial offer to the customer. Here we are taking this example of DFG hub from ABC Foundry. Casting weight is 8 kg. Number of cavity is 4, good casting weight per box is 32, bunch weight 44 kg, yield percentage 73% which is the estimated yield, number of boxes per ton will be 23, material grade FG300. Material cost, metal cost includes scrap cost and alloy cost. One has to ensure material grade required hardness, microstructure requirements to choose charge mix and alloy accordingly. Specific requirement of pig iron, copper, or tin, or any other specific special alloy has to be considered. Special type of inoculant, low manganese CRC, is etc., needs to be considered while making this costing. Take adequate recovery of alloys, add required burning loss and expected yield percentage while calculating this cost. While taking raw material and alloy prices, you have to be very careful and need to be mentioned of raw material in the quotation. Base of raw material in the quotation for getting future price rise or reduction when these prices get increased or decreased in the market. Also mention charge mix percentage scrap wise for the future price correction in the quotation. So this is how the metal cost can be calculated. I have given him given here an example with pegan 100 kg, boring 150 kg, MS scrap 320 kg, RR 480 kg. Then coke requirement, silicon requirement, ferromanganese requirement, ferrochrome requirement, copper requirement, then uh, inspection of ferrol cup and ferro tip, metal loss uh, consideration. We, we have I have considered here three percent inoculation two kg. It gives uh, total cumulative liquid metal. Then weight of good uh, good metal considering the yield percentage, weight of RR, which is uh, uh, deducted from the cumulative metal to find out total good weight of uh, of the metal and it gives you final metal cost that is 36 rupees 65 paisa per kg of good casting now we go to power cost this includes power requirement for the melting and other power required for other areas in the foundry like melt molding uh, sand plant then core shop fettling etc 
here per unit power cost rate need to be considered and to be mentioned in the quotation your power consumption per ton of liquid metal and per ton of good casting has to be considered for calculating this power cost per unit power cost and units you have to consider per ton of good casting has to be mentioned in the quotation for future increase or decrease in the prices with the customer in future so it is very important to consider melting as well as other power and power rate per unit has to be considered and it has to be mentioned in the quotation for future discussion with the customer for price correction this is how it has been calculated melting power i have considered here 600 units other power i have considered 175 units total 775 units per ton of liquid metal and rate is 9 rupees 50 paisa per unit i have considered and the total power cost will be 10 rupees 12 paisa per kg of good casting now we go to molding cost molding cost needs to be considered by adding cost of sand required sluice required filter required sand additive densener chapless requirement for the making of the mold here the correct estimation of sleeve size and yield percentage and number of cavities expected per box needs to be assessed perfectly to avoid the mismatch in estimating costing and actual costing. Here is the important thing is sleeve size because you have to understand the customer specific requirements especially for the radiography level and uh, leakage testing and the uh, we can say the uh, casting needs to be uh, uh, we can say uh, leakage proof casting or the radiography level NSD required or level 1 required or level 2 required so it will reflect the uh, type of measuring you want to do for getting that uh, casting uh, level of radiography so it is very important to estimate the sleeve size the gating system and that estimation has to be very correct because it will definitely have huge impact on your commercial cost so Correct estimation of sleeve size is very important. Here is the molding cost uh, assessment. We are, I have done the molding costing here uh, with the box uh, sand weight is 300 kg, benton addition 1%, coal bond addition around 0.3%, uh, space sand uh, I have added 2 kg here. Then I have considered 60 by 6, uh, 60 by 150 sleeve here one number and the, it gives me a total molding cost of 3 rupees 7 paisa per kg of good casting so the this kind of uh, calculation you can do and find out your molding cost core cost core cost is required to be calculated if part required any core so if the core is required in your uh, in your casting you have to consider the core cost as well here first which type of core we are going to be used has to be decided whether the, it is a cold box core or shell core or no back core that has to be decided uh, it is based mainly on the core size or geometry of the core or core weight as well so it will give you idea of which type of core you are going to use then you must have to estimate weight of the core and then calculate the core cost requirement of painting drying is also need to be considered while calculating the core cost here cost of sand, core additives, core paint, core drying, manpower required for core making, painting and drying has to be considered in the core cost. Core weight, I, the, the, it is the estimation core uh, cost for the casting that is core weight is 3.3 .3 kg, core type is cold box core, core cost per kg of core is 14.5 rupees per kg of core is the core cost so total core cost comes out to be 5 rupees 98 paisa per kg of good casting so this is how the uh, core weight can be calculated short blasting and fettling cost after pouring and knockout short blasting and fettling are important post pouring activity fit of these activities will decide the inventory so the so to reduce inventory costs and to speed up the dispatches this activity is very important and most of the foundries are not giving same importance to these activities but these activities will play an important role in rotating cash flow and reducing your inventory cost hence 
here one has to consider the short blasting and fettling cost based on the casting requirements, the criticality and the geometry of the casting, material grade of the casting, surface requirement, machining setup requirements also need to be considered while deciding the cost of fettling and short blasting. Here along with shots, fettling consumable cost of fettling and short blasting manpower has to be considered in the estimation of short blasting and fettling cost. I have considered here short blasting and fettling cost as rupees 2.75 per kg of good casting. Painting cost. Here the customer requirements regarding the painting surface requirements need to be considered. Spray or deep painting, paint quality, salt spray taste, DFT requirements, drying of paint is needs to be considered while estimating this cost. Here paint cost and painting manpower cost need to be considered while calculating painting cost. I have considered here painting cost as rupees 1 per kg of good casting. Labor cost. Here overall labor cost for the production including melting, molding, pouring and knockout need to be considered in the labor cost. While calculating this cost one has to see what is bunch weight, box size of the your line, then melting capacity per hour, molding capacity per hour, number of manpower required, skilled manpower required, semi skilled manpower required, unskilled manpower required, yield percentage, productivity per hour while estimating the manpower or labor cost per kg of good casting. You can reduce it by improving percentage of yield and by improving productivity at each stage by increasing weight of the box. Also, automation plays an important role in reducing your labor cost. So, you invest in the automation, you will definitely find some improvement or some reduction in the labor cost as well. I have considered here labor cost as rupees 3 per kg of good casting. Rejection cost. Here, expected non conforming material that is NCM, that is a rejection, has to be considered and Loss due to rejection is supposed to be added as a cost in the final cost as a rejection cost. Here, you need to take back scrap value from the total cost that is cost of melting, molding, power cost, core cost, short blasting cost, fettling cost, manpower cost, which is already incurred in making of that rejected part. By reducing this rejection or NCM, you can reduce this variable cost as well as you can also reduce fixed cost due to net sale get increase due to less rejection. So, by reducing rejection, you can not only control your variable cost in the term of uh, rejection cost, but also you can reduce your uh, fixed cost as well. Rejection cost, I have considered your 7% rejection, rupees 2.07. Transport cost of freight. This is a, this is this transport cost is required for internal and external movement of the casting for variable various operations like short blasting, fettling, painting, machining, or for the dispatches of the customer as final product. Here, one has to see less transport of casting by providing the proper layout of the plant and by arranging operations in sequence. Also, utilization of vehicle capacity to full and optimizing batch sizes helps you in reducing your transport cost. I have considered here 0 0.35 per kg of good casting as a transport or freight cost. This is the variable cost estimation, melting cost 36 rupees 65 paisa, power cost 10 rupees 12 paisa, molding cost 3 rupees 7 paisa, core cost 5 rupees 98 paisa, labor cost 3 rupees, short blasting and fettling 2 rupees 75 paisa, painting cost 1 rupees, rejection cost 2 rupees 07 paisa, Transport cost 35 paisa, so the total variable cost comes around 65 rupees per kg of good casting. So, by calculating these all costs, adding them together, we can finally get our variable cost as rupees 65 per kg. So, by calculating these all costs and adding them together, we can finally get our variable cost, which is very important, and hence it is important to take proper inputs from the uh, customer while making this variable cost that is customer specific requirement. If wrong or incorrect data is added to get this variable cost, there are chances that after development, Foundry will come to know that part is commercially not viable and then, but till that time, we have already accepted the customer offer or legal PO so that 
then getting this price corrected from the customer is very difficult and is almost impossible thing. So estimating variable cost correctly is a big and challenging and important task for each foundry. So this is from my side. Thank you very much for your pure patient hearing. And I hope you have understand this uh, concept of calculating variable cost and you will be continuing that as well. Thank you.